from history. Welcome to Weirdos from History, where we dive into the diaries of history's most dazzling and sometimes deranged denizens. Uh, today we're prying into the peculiar pages of Gouverneur Morris's life, a man whose story is so stuffed with scandal and strangeness, it makes modern politics look positively pedestrian. So, buckle up as we embark on an expedition through the eccentric existence of this founding father, peg-legged playboy and political powerhouse. Born on January 31st, 1752, in what's now known as the Bronx, Governor Morris was not governed by mediocrity. With a name that sounds like a gubernatorial mandate and a mind as sharp as the quill he wielded, Morris was destined for distinction. His early education at King's College, now Columbia University, set the stage for a life less ordinary. At the tender age of 14, Morris experienced a boiling blunder that would make anyone wince. A kettle of boiling water decided to tango with him, leaving scars that were more than skin deep. Yet this early encounter with pain was merely a prelude to the peculiar path his life would take. Fast forward to 1780 and Morris's penchant for peril found him in a frightful fracas that cost him his left leg. The tale of how he lost it is shrouded in whispers and winks. Some say it was a carriage accident, while others suggest a scandalous leap from a lover's window. Regardless, Morris wasn't one to let a wooden leg slow his stride. Indeed, Morris's wooden appendage seemed to amplify his allure, especially among the ladies. His romantic rendezvous were as legendary as his legislative labors, proving that even in the 18th century, politics and pleasure were peculiar bedfellows. As the American Revolution raged, Morris's family found themselves fractured by the fight. While he threw his support behind the Patriot cause, his kin kowtowed to the crown. This domestic divide didn't deter Morris, who spoke more often than any other delegate at the Constitutional Convention, proving his patriotism and penchant for verbosity. Morris's mastery of the written word was undeniable. As a member of the Committee of Style, he was the stylistic savior of the U.S. Constitution, ensuring its preamble was as punchy as it was profound. We, the people, owe him a debt of gratitude for that opening line alone. But Morris's adventures weren't confined to the colonies. In 1789, he trotted off to Paris, plunging into the pulsating heart of the French Revolution. His diary during this time is a treasure trove of titillation and terror, offering insights into the upheaval that upended France. Among his French frolics was a torrid affair with the novelist Comtesse Adelaide de Flau, who was conveniently married to a count three decades her senior. Morris shared his mistress with none other than Talleyrand, proving that love triangles in Paris were as common as croissants. Morris braved the barrage of chaos, steadfast at his post when others fled. Now imagine the scene, surrounded by a sea of sinister faces, a mob itching to dangle Morris from the nearest lamppost. He does the unthinkable. In a swift and dramatic gesture, Morris whips off his wooden leg, wielding it not merely as a prosthetic, but as a symbol of valor. With the poise of a battle-hardened hero, he proclaims, I am an American who sacrificed this limb fighting for liberty. The mob, utterly taken aback by such a bold declaration of bravery and sacrifice, finds their hostile intent melting away. Their jeers of judgment transform into roars of respect. In that pivotal moment, Morris proved that sometimes a little historical embellishment can be the leg up to legendary status. In 1809, at the ripe age of 57, Morris made a matrimonial move that shocked society. He married his housekeeper, Anne Carey Nancy Randolph, a woman entangled in a scandal so salacious it would make a tabloid tremble. Accused of infanticide in a saga involving her brother-in-law, Nancy's nuptials to Morris were nothing short of sensational. Morris wasn't just a man of words, he was a visionary of the urban landscape. Appointed to a commission in 1807, he helped hatch the plan for Manhattan's iconic street grid, proving that his talents transcended the textual. Yet Morris's mind wasn't confined to city planning. During the War of 1812, he advocated for secession, 
suggesting New York and New England bid adieu to the Union. It seems even the man who helped bind the nation with his prose pondered pulling it apart. Morris's demise in 1816 was as bizarre as his life. Attempting a bit of DIY surgery to relieve a urinary blockage with a piece of whalebone, he inadvertently signed his own death warrant. It was an ignoble end for a man of such monumental intellect and influence. Theodore Roosevelt, a man no stranger to the spotlight, penned a biography of Morris, lauding his keen intellect and brilliant genius. It's a reminder that Morris's legacy, though littered with eccentricities, is etched into the very foundation of America. Morris's life was a tapestry of triumphs and tribulations, a testament to the tumultuous times in which he lived. From his legislative legacy to his lascivious liaisons, Morris was a man who embraced existence in all its eccentricity. As we close the book on Governor Morris, remember that history is heaving with heroes and hooligans, and sometimes they're one and the same. If you've enjoyed this jaunt through the jumbled journey of one of America's most jubilant jesters, do us a favor, like subscribe or leave a comment. Until next time, keep curious, comrades.